Hi everyone, it's KFK's Creative Home. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making a beehive wreath or bee bumblebee wreath um, using the 14 inch work, uh, working wreath frame that we put together from Dollar Tree. So have you made a uh, bumblebee wreath? If so, let us know in the comments. I'm going to start today by rolling some of this mesh. This is 10 inches wide. I think I have cut it into 10 inch or 12 inch pieces. Either one will work. And then I'm just giving it a little scrunch in the middle and holding it with this clip until I'm ready to add them to my wreath. Um, I like to do these preps ahead of time because it helps me with my momentum. Once I um, got everything together, pulling the wreath together, the final wreath, is a lot faster okay so i'm going to finish adding these together if you've never been on this channel before welcome 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 we're so happy to have you here and again if you have any questions please just leave them in the comment section and i'll be happy to try to assist you the best of my ability all right on my left ear you'll see some of the ribbons you will be using oh i moved them out the way you can't even see them no more <laughs> All right, so I have my working reframe, and I'm going to start by gathering the edge of this mesh. I've used this before, so it's kind of got an uneven edge, and I'm going straight across. Uh, and so the end looks a little jaggedy, but I made sure where I went across was even. And I'm going to start on my inner circle, and I have tied it into one of the um, pipe cleaners I've added. And now I'm using a zip tie to um, tighten the end. And then I'm going to cut the ends so all that frayed uh, mesh isn't showing or won't come peeking through my final reef. Okay, so again, this mesh is 10 inches wide, and I'm going to do um, some uh, poofs right now. And I'm measuring out at um, 10 inches, I believe. Yes, 10 inches um, to make my poofs. And then we're going to go all the way around the inner circle, just um, measuring out 10 inches. I always make sure that my edges are kind of tucked under so they won't be sticking out in your wreath. And I'm just looking at my markings on my cutting board to get my 10 inches. And then I'm going to, right at the 10 inch mark, put it into the um, pipe cleaners and twist it a couple times to tighten it up open up that little poof and then I'm moving on to the next one measuring it out adding it into my pipe cleaner giving my pipe cleaners a little twist and poofing it out a little okay now I'm going to finish going around the inner edge I mean the inner circle and the outer circle and get all of these poofs loaded and I will be right back. So I've just added in my last poof on the outer ring. I'm um, spreading them out a little bit and now I'm going to cut off the extra mesh that I have and then I'm going to follow the same procedure I did at the beginning. I'm going to take a zip tie and gather it around that raw edge, attach it to the back of my reef form again so that it won't continue fraying and coming apart. So I've got that all nice and tight. I'm going to use my zip tie gun to tighten it even more and to cut that zip tie and you can see how they look okay so the next thing we want to do moving on to the next step is to add in some more embellishments to our reef I have cut 14 inch ribbon and um, gave it a fishtail or dovetail edge by cutting in a small V at the end I was trying to decide if I would use black and yellow together when I did these added in these rolls <clears throat> excuse me and I'm just trying one on the outer edge but I am going to start on the inner edge 
And um, I decided to go with two blacks and then two yellows and alternate them that way. So I wanted there to be some difference in the reef and not have it too uniform. So um, when I have the two blacks here, I'm using the beige and black um, ribbon and this bright yellow and white check ribbon. And I'm also going to be uh, twisting that pipe cleaner real tightly and tucking it in at the at the end. Um, the one and a half inch ribbon, I have just cut at an angle. The wider two and a half inch ribbon, I've cut as a uh, fishtail at the end. Now I chose my colors for this reef. Of course, a beehive is and the bees. You usually think of the black and yellow. And then um, my ribbon has that neutral color on the background. So I decided to use some neutral mesh and then add in the black and yellow colors with other the other things that I'm doing. And that's why my base is a neutral color. Now I am going to alternate as I go around the reef, but I decided to go ahead and go back to the inner circle. And when you add these little curls on, make sure that the open edge is down, what I was just pointing to. And I'm using the same one because I'm now on the inner circle, not on the outer circle anymore. Um, so I put that on. I was trying to do the those little rolls and the ribbon together. My hands just couldn't handle it. So I decided to put the rolls in, give it a twist, and then come back and put the ribbon in and give it a few twists, get it nice and snug, give it a nice trim, and then tuck that edge in of the um, pipe cleaner. So you don't end up cutting yourself, cutting your customer. And then just spreading out my ribbon there. Okay, see how cute that looks? It's going to come together so fast when you see these colors blending. And then here, you, from that angle, it was easy to see um, that one was on the inner circle and one of those was on the outer circle. So I'm going to the next one on the inner circle. And this time, I'm going to put my two yellows in and then use my ribbon that has the bees and it has the um, the cone shapes like from a beehive. Now here's where I was trying to put everything in at once. Yeah, my hands have uh, seen better days. So I was like, nope. <laughs> I had to go ahead and just do the rolls first. Give it a little snug. Make sure the rolls are spread out in like an X shape. And X, like X-ray, in an X shape. And then I'm going to add that ribbon in there and um, give it a couple twists and then I'll uh, give it a trim and once I give it a trim I will tuck my ends in because remember there's wire in that uh, pipe cleaner so that's why you tuck it in so it's not um, hurting anybody I choose to do the same format as I work my way around um, I'm very symmetrical so you can see I have my two and a half inch ribbon going from uh, top to bottom is left slant and then the yellow check, the one and a half, has got that right slant. So when I move to the next one, the B, which is the wider ribbon, had the same left slant and the um, honeycomb, which is the one and a half, has the same right slant. So that's it for basic the basis of this reef i'm going to just have to finish repeating this pattern all the way around on the inner circle and then the outer circle and when i'm finished this um we'll come back together and we will make a um bow a nice a nice size bow um don't forget if you do enjoy these videos don't forget to um, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you're not a family member consider hitting that button and ringing the bell so you can subscribe and get notified when I release new videos. Now one other thing I'll, I'll mention again as I do this next one, I, when I put in those curls I open them up so that it makes like an X shape and that's going to help to fill in your reef. Excuse me, it'll help to fill in your reef so you don't just everything everything bundled together as you go around. And now I'm adding in my ribbon again and of course once I get it all twisted in I will trim that edge 
and uh, be real careful with that because if you don't watch where those scissors are directed you will end up cutting your mesh or cutting your ribbon and then when I do the ribbon I kind of uh, curve it so that it has that look of like a bird's wings flapping out and um, that'll help it to uh, mold to the shape of your wreath so it's not like stuck down on the wreath but it follows the same curved shape of your wreath okay let's make our way on around here and I'll be right back Look everyone, I finally remembered to put down my zip tie and my pipe cleaners before making my bow. Give me a hand. <laughs> so I don't have the really long pipe cleaner, so I just took um, two and twisted them together at the end. So you see a double strand of pipe cleaners because um, uh, these uh, some of these pipe cleaners are kind of thin and frail. And I always think that if... They're used, someone is using it to attach their bow and over time when the, the wires break inside I want them to have another uh, pipe cleaner there available to be used. Okay, alright so I've started with um, an 18 inch tail. I'm going to do three loops and they are starting at six inches out. And then my last tail will be, I tell you I go one inch past the loop so that's seven inches I'm cutting that at. And then I'm going to finish the end. And I'll let you know again that all of my ribbon is, um, you see me using, it's usually available in my Etsy shop. If, um, if I haven't uploaded it there, or if you're interested in some of the ribbon, just leave me a comment and say, you know that yellow and white checkered ribbon you used to make your bee wreath? I like to purchase 10 yards of that. Um, if you look at the other spring ribbon, in my shop you'll see the current prices for five yards ten yards um, and if I have a huge spool I'll even sell some at 50 yards um, the entire spool but um, you can see the prices there it's always the same because Sam's Club ribbon is all the same price so um, if you like to have some leave me a comment and say again like Kay I didn't see that uh, B um, I didn't see the B ribbon could I I would like to get five yards or ten yards of that and I will get it listed so that you can make your purchase and I'll let you know um, and the reason is um, I started trying to list all of that ribbon boy is it a lot I have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of ribbon and after a while I was like why am I listing hundreds of ribbon and nobody's buying it so if you're interested just let me know okay so I've gotten in my first two ribbons here and this one I started on the uh, left side again because I was trying to make sure on the tail the bees would be flying in an upward direction doesn't really matter because I said you know a, a bee flies forward back left right uh, up down they're just like kind of non-directional they can zoom around any kind of way but um, I wanted for this purpose I decided to let them fly in an upward direction and 
So I started the first tail pointing up instead of that long one at the bottom because that would have left all of my bees look uh, flying in a downward direction. So that's why I did that and now I'm going to, I made my three loops. Uh, starting with this ribbon I'm at five inches. The first two ribbons I did six inch loops and now I'm doing five inch loops so that it can come in a little bit. And now you see I'm holding it and trying to go all the way down to figure out how much ribbon I need to make it to my 18 inches at the bottom there. And I put that little clip there on the center of the ribbon on the um, bow maker to kind of hold the ribbon in place to keep it from sliding up more than sliding out. Um, kind of got that idea from watching another wreath maker on Facebook who actually has this, I, t I mentioned it before, this really, really, really nice <laughs> bow maker. And she has a piece that she actually built to hold the ribbon down in the center. So while I'm putting together my funds to get that bow maker, I was like, I can just use a little clamp there to kind of hold it in place for now. But I would love to have the deluxe bow maker. All right, so I this particular ribbon I really like. I love the design on there. I never thought of that about that, but I really like it. So it's a little um, look like the inside of a beehive, the little co cones shapes. And then they made it different colors, the yellow and the orange variation that just really makes it a nice uh, ribbon. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. We are in full allergy season here in Maryland. Oh my goodness. And I have started, but um, <laughs> I am just fluffing out my bow now, trying to get all of my loops arranged where um, they can be seen so that when I start tightening everything, I won't have to try to work so hard to um, put everything in place. So this is when I usually do this. Like again, holding that center so that ribbon doesn't move too much. Um, and then once I'm done, I grab that zip tie from the bottom, bring it up, and cl start closing it, get it a little snug. And then I'm going to lift all of that bow up off of the bow maker. And um, once I do that, then I spin the zip tie around so that, um, oh, I found another tail that needed to be clipped. All right, got that done. So, um, once I finish this, I'll take that zip tie and pull it up, pull my bow up. I'll spin that zip tie around until it's right in the center. Because right now, the prongs are in the center. The prongs of the bow maker. So I've got to actually slide that zip tie over a little bit. So it will be right in the center. And so that my loops will be even. So you can see I've cut my uh, two and a half inch tails there at a with a... Um, dovetail in and then the one and a half inch I did just the um, diagonal is that diagonal yes the diagonal slant cut so here I am sliding that zip tie um, around to the center and starting to pull it tight and I love doing this when you pull that zip tie tight and the bow start to kind of pop out from the center I think it's just so neat <laughs> it's like the things that make a crafter happy um, <laughs> so um, again I've got it really snug now. I um still doing that last minute shaping before I make it super tight because then it's really hard to shape. So I've got my zip tie gun there in the back. I'm pulling it over and over. And you can see how those um, loops just popped up even more. They're almost standing up now. And that's what helps to make your bow um, take on a really nice shape. If you can get that center really tight, it'll make the top of your bow just pop up. So um, I got the uh, zip tie gun. I clamped the end of the zip tie off and I gave the um, pipe cleaners a little bit of a twist so that they're um, really centered, right in the center now. Bought them together and gave it a little twist right on top of the uh, where I cut the zip tie. And now I have got this cute little bow just shaping it up. Forever shaping, forever shaping, forever shaping. <laughs> All right, so here's the little bow. Oh no, I found another tail. Man. Okay, so I got one more tail I gotta cut here. 
I don't know how I missed that many. It's not that many. It's only four ribbons, and I still managed to miss some. So make sure you check. Here's my little bow. I think it's so cute. I love the colors. I really love that honeycomb with the um, bees. And then that black, I mean the beige with that black and white dotted stripe down the middle. They just go together so, so, so well. I had another yellow ribbon um, that I was going to use instead of this checked one. And when I opened it, it did not have any wire on the edges. So I've got to take that back to Sam's Club. And I'm going to put that in the Facebook group so that others can make sure they check theirs. Okay now, I um, am now using one of the tubes from my mesh. And I'm using it to curl the edges of my ribbon. Um, I really like doing it this way. It makes my curls really even and smooth. Um, just a, another little simple tip that can really improve the appearance of your uh, tails as you curl them for your bows or your wreaths, whatever you want to curl there. Okay, I got that done. So again, as always, I'm going to share some pictures with you so you can see what this wreath would look like on a few different doors. All right, I want to thank you for spending this time with me, and I'll be talking with you again real soon.